It is Wednesday, June 3rd, and you are looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 9.25 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. Hello from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Jesse Anderson, and I'm a lead manufacturing engineer here at SpaceX. You're watching a live webcast for our eighth Starlink mission and our ninth mission this year. Today, we've launched over 420 Starlink satellites to orbit. As a reminder, Starlink is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet all over the globe, particularly in remote or rural areas where connectivity is limited or completely unavailable. This latest launch comes on the heels of our historical first launch of humans over the weekend. In case you missed it, we'll give you a quick update on that later in the broadcast. At T minus nine minutes, all systems are go for an on-time liftoff this evening. And if for any reason there is a hold on the countdown today, we have a backup launch window opportunity tomorrow at 9.04 p.m. Eastern. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9, our 70 meter two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle, getting ready for launch from Space Launch Complex 40, or SLIC 40. This booster will be flying for the fifth time today. It previously supported the Telstar 18 Vantage mission, Iridium 8, and the first Starlink mission, as well as the third Starlink mission. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. You can see the soot markings from left over from the, its last flight. And the first stage accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of nine Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. Today, we will be attempting to recover the first stage for the fifth time, which, if we are successful, would be the first fifth landing of a Falcon 9 booster. Today, we are using our drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which was our very first drone ship, and opposed to our more commonly used drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, since it was currently occupied by our Demo 2 Falcon 9 booster up until last night from this past weekend's exciting historical launch. Just Read the Instructions is currently stationed about 350 nautical miles northeast of the Cape and about 200 nautical miles east of Charleston. Above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Starlink satellites into an elliptical orbit above the Earth's surface. From there, they will use their propulsion system to move up to their operational altitude of 550 kilometers. And Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since T minus 35 minutes. And as a reminder, we use a rocket grade kerosene or RP-1 as our fuel and super chilled liquid oxygen or LOX as our oxidizer to power Falcon 9. And currently, RP-1 and LOX are nearly fully loaded on both stages and LOX will continue to be topped off right until the last minute of the countdown. The stack of 60 satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which you can see on your screen. That's that pointed structure at the very top of the rocket. This protects the satellites from the aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during ascent. But once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need them. So we will jettison the fairing as the stage second stage one, continues on its journey to orbit. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today using our recovery ships Miss Tree and Miss Chief. At approximately T plus 40 minutes, the team will perform a poll to confirm if we're all good to make a catch attempt and weather plays a factor as well as telemetry of the fairing, its altitude, position, and speed. And we were watching some thick clouds earlier, um, making sure that we are good for weather, just like we did in last week's launch, Demo 2 launch, constantly checking on the weather. But today, we are currently go for weather at T0. So with that, the vehicle, satellites, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just about five and a half minutes from now. And as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we are coming off an amazing weekend with the SpaceX and NASA teams successfully launching the dads, NASA astronauts Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley to the International Space Station. 
Our second demonstration mission, or what we call Demo 2, lifted off from historic launch pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center on Saturday, May 30th, and 19 hours later docked with the International Space Station. The mission marks the first time a commercially built spacecraft has launched people to the space station and the first time in nearly 10 years that the U.S. has launched astronauts into space from U.S. soil. The video that you see on your screen is Bob and Doug floating around in orbit, giving us a tour of their Dragon spacecraft, which they named Endeavor to commemorate the huge efforts made by the SpaceX team, as well as a nod to the first shuttle that they both flew on. Demo 2 is an end-to-end -end flight test from launch to docking to splashdown. It is the final major milestone for SpaceX's human spaceflight system to be certified by NASA for operational crew missions to and from the International Space Station. While Bob and Doug certainly had the best seats for the Demo 2 launch, they weren't the only ones to try their hand at docking Dragon to the space station. We recently released the same simulation that the astronauts trained on in advance of the Demo 2 mission. Head over to iss-sim.spacex.com to give it a try yourself. That simulation, the displays in Crew Dragon, and a bunch of other really cool projects were developed by SpaceX software engineers. Software engineers at SpaceX get to work across exciting projects that drive our rockets, spacecraft, satellites, and ground systems. If you're interested in helping roll out Starlink to the world or taking humanity to the moon and Mars, send your resume to softwarejobs at spacex.com. We will also be setting up a Reddit Ask Me Anything or AMA with our software team in the next week or so. So stay tuned to our social media accounts for details on that. Once Demo 2 is complete, the SpaceX and NASA teams have reviewed all the data for certification. NASA astronauts Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, Shannon Walker, and JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi have been assigned to fly on Dragon's first six-month operational mission, which we're calling Crew-1, which is targeted for later this year. We are currently two and a half minutes from liftoff and Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The first and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Super chilled liquid oxygen, which as I mentioned earlier is our propellant oxidizer, is what's creating those white clouds that you see around Falcon 9 when it's exposed to the warmer ambient air. You can see that on your screen there. First stage should finish prop loading, uh, actually already has finished prop loading at T minus three minutes, and second stage is coming up on finished prop loading at T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup, and that means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch stage countdown. Two, lock load is complete. So with the Starlink payload, Continuing to be healthy, the F-9 teams, Falcon 9 teams are tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking good and the range is green for launch. So we are at T minus one and a half minutes from liftoff. And again, in about 30 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. What this means is that the vehicle will basically be autonomously making its decision if it will continue with liftoff at T0. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. And at T minus 45 seconds, there was that call out for go for launch. Again, that was the Falcon 9 rocket making that decision autonomously. Now we are T minus 30 seconds 30 from seconds. liftoff of our Starlink payload tonight. So let's listen in and watch liftoff. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Stop the fishing damage. We are T plus 40 seconds into flight and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, carrying our Starlink payload to its targeted drop off orbit. Moments ago, we did throttle down our engines in preparation for max Q. And that is the maximum aerodynamic pressure, which is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see. That's coming up here in a few seconds. Max Q. And there's that call out that we have just passed through Max Q. In about a minute, we will have three events happening back to back. The first of which will be main engine cutoff or MECO. This is where all nine M1D engines shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, which is stage separation. Stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage with the first stage First stage starting to make its way back to Earth for landing and stage two continuing on its journey with the third event called SES-1 or second engine start one. And that's where the MVAC engine lights up on the second stage and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to its drop off orbit. orbit. We are at T plus two minutes and five seconds. So we're just about 25 seconds away from those three events. Again, that is Miko stage separation and SES-1, or second engine start one. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And there you can see on your screen, on the left screen, we had main engine cutoff and stage separation. On your right screen is the second stage MVAC engine lighting up glowing bright red there. And it is a bit dark on the East Coast. But you can see on your left screen that first stage, those grid fins are deploying. And on your right screen, we have fairing deploy coming fairing up separation here. separation confirmed. And there is that confirmation of fairing deploy. Now let's see if those fairing halves can be recovered by our recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief today. Again, we won't have that live. That will happen around T plus 40 minutes, so check in with our social media accounts for updates on those fairing halves. And stage two still looking nominal. Again, that is what you see on your right screen. Stage one is making its way back. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And as the first stage makes its way back to Earth, it will perform two burns, the first of which will be the entry burn, and that is where three of the nine M1D engines reignite, and this helps slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. And finally will be the second and final burn is the landing burn. And this is a single engine burn. That's the center E9 engine that reignites and brings the vehicle all the way down. Very, very uh, rapidly slows the vehicle down so that it can touch down and land on the drone ship. Again, we are attempting to land the first stage today on just read the instructions. 
as our Of Course I Still Love You drone ship was occupied with her Demo 2 vehicle from over the weekend up until last night. We are at T plus five and a half minutes. Stage two still looking nominal. And first stage making its way back. That first burn, that entry burn will be coming up in about a minute from now, around T plus six minutes and 45 seconds. And that entry burn will last about 20 seconds long. Again, that is to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. Stage two on your right screen, still on a nominal trajectory. And on your left screen, it is a little bit dark. It is nighttime on the East Coast, but we should see that screen light up with, those, with that entry burn, those three engines reigniting. Stage one FTS has saved. Stage one entry burn has started. And there you hear that call out as well as a visual confirmation that those engines have reignited. The vehicle continues to follow a nominal trajectory. And stage one entry burn shut down. And confirmation that the stage one entry burn is complete as well as stage two still looking nominal. If you heard that call out. Coming up next is the landing burn around T plus eight and a half minutes, around eight minutes and 24 seconds. Looks like we lost that live view of the first stage coming down, but that is expected. So hopefully we can get that live view back. Right now, what you're, seeing, transonic. Right now what you're seeing on your left screen is the drone ship just read the instructions. Followed very closely after the landing burn and landing of the first stage will be Seco 1, that is second engine cutoff, around T plus 8 minutes and 58 seconds. Stage 1 landing burn has started. Turn on guidance. Landing legs have deployed. Stage two FTS has saved. And wow, as you saw coming and down, GRTI, that first stage, stage Falcon 9. Operators moving to procedure 11.100 on recovery one and ECF nine. <laughs> Amazing, that first stage booster has landed for the first time, for the fifth time for a Falcon 9 booster. That is amazing. We're waiting for a second stage engine cut off. What an amazing view of that first stage coming down, even though it, it, it was dark and night, but those engines lighting up the screen, watching first stage come down was Not an amazing view. And we heard a call out of good orbit for second stage. Acquisition of signal, Newfoundland. And now that second stage is going to 
uh, now that second stage is in a good orbit, it's going to coast for a few minutes. And during this time, it will start to spin along its central axis, giving these Starlink satellites Expected the momentum that they signal. need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. So we will take a quick break and return back here at T plus 14 minutes. Welcome back to the webcast for Starlink. So far we had an on-time liftoff tonight. Stage one successfully separated from stage two and made its way back to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, which was the first time a booster has landed for a fifth time in SpaceX history. So very exciting. Stage two is still nominal. Um, and now we are coming up on deployment of the Starlink satellite shortly here in about 40 seconds or so. And we firmly believe in the importance of a natural night sky for all of us to enjoy, which is why we have been working with leading astronomers around the world to better understand the specifics of their observations and engineering changes we can make to reduce satellite brightness. One measure we're taking to accomplish this is by adding a deployable visor to the satellite to block sunlight from hitting the brightest parts of the spacecraft. 
Now let's listen in to that call out for payload deploy. And again, the first unit with the sun visor is actually on this payload right here that you see in front of you. Payload deploy confirmed. And there is that confirmation. We got a live view as it was deploying from the vehicle. Those Starlink satellites are making their way, separating from second stage right in front of you right now. Shortly, they will deploy their solar array, and over the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their operational orbit. And also, just to note, tomorrow is June 4th. That was actually the anniversary of our first Falcon flight. 10-year anniversary of our first flight. So very exciting time. First Falcon 9 flight. So very, very exciting times. And that brings our webcast to a close. Follow our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. And as the work goes on to build a better, more exciting future, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you at the next launch.